everybody it's Gina here from Gina makes it welcome back to my channel in today's video I am sharing how I created a tag journal using two free templates on my website at ginamakesit.com so I am just showing you here how I created the cover and that is using this first template that has a spine in the middle of two tag shapes so you can see I cut it out of some cardstock and then I just folded it on those two solid lines and now I'm just erasing some of those pencil marks from when I traced it and then I cut it out so my tag journal is going to have a spine where you actually sew signatures in and these are the signatures so you can see the difference between the two templates is that this one doesn't have that rectangle in the middle so there's no spine and so you just fold it and then this will be your signature as you put them all together so I had already cut a bunch out of different papers I used some old ledger papers some coffee dyed paper and then I collaged some of them very similar to the way that I did my collage journals and a few of the journaling cards and I'll link those videos down below in case you'd like to take a closer look at that and then I also um, punched the hole out at the top and then I added some reinforcement circles to the collaged pages I don't know what I'm doing with the other pages yet so I just left those blank so right now I'm just going around and erasing some of the pencil lines from when I traced the template that was an old very old vintage magazine and these like I said are just some coffee pages once I get these pages all cleaned up I'm actually going to take the collaged tags and I'm going to do some sewing around the perimeter I use a really dark thread I've been kind of liking the contrast of dark threads normally I use a lighter more tone on tone type thread but uh, lately I've been gravitating towards creating a little bit more contrast with the sewing um, on my pieces and on my pages and so I do add a dark brown thread to my sewing machine and I go around the perimeter twice you can see and I add a little bit of different stitches and I really like the way that turned out. Now I'm actually going to start to work on assembling the journal itself and it's a very straightforward process um, once you get all the templates cut out it's just a matter of sewing in your signatures. At first I thought I was going to just have one but given the spine is two inches I decided to use two signatures instead of one and like I said I cut this cover out of some coffee dyed cardstock but I want to reinforce the middle just to give it a little bit extra strength since I am sewing in two signatures I didn't want it to rip or tear or to fail at any point during uh, the construction or while I was working inside of the journal itself so I'm just measuring another piece of coffee dyed cardstock to reinforce that centerpiece and then I decide to kind of decorate the spine itself so it's not so plain with just two signatures sewn in and so now I'm trying to figure out how exactly I want to decorate it I decided to use this vintage lace and vintage fabric for the middle of the spine but before I do anything with that I am going to glue in my piece of cardstock like I said just to add a little bit of reinforcement to that spine since I am going to be sewing through it I'm not creating a hidden spine so I'm going to po be poking holes and it's going to get kind of heavy with the two signatures so I just wanted to make sure that it was going to be able to stand up to the test of time so once I get that glued down I am going to glue down my two pieces of lace and they're going to flank either side of that vintage fabric and that's going to go directly in the middle Once I get everything glued in and sort of trimmed up I make sure that I'm able to fold the cover properly and so I'm really giving a good crease 
to kind of work in the fabric and that extra piece of cardstock just so it doesn't uh, get stuck kind of laying open so once the more you kind of work it and work the paper around it it's kind of like clay it kind of molds to the new materials on the inside and opens and closes the way that it should so it's at this point that I'm deciding to separate it into two signatures and I go ahead and do that and then I paper clip all of the edges like I normally do when I'm sewing in signatures but I do sew this in a little bit differently I had recently seen some a few people I should say I was gonna say someone but it's been a few people who have done some fancy signature sewing <laughs> on the spine and so I wanted to create two X's with my spine so it would become more of a decorative element uh, on the side versus trying to hide it now I should mention that this journal for me is going to serve as kind of like a mixed media journal. I'm going to start to play around in it and I thought it would be nice to do it as a tag because I really do like mixed media tags and I thought creating a journal to kind of play around in and work in would be nice and so that's the purpose of it and that is exactly why I'm trying to kind of step out of my comfort zone and do things that I've been wanting to try or that I've um, seen and thought it would be nice to experience experiment with and so it's really wasn't that difficult to sew these in that way but it did just take a little bit more planning than normal and instead of sewing in one signature and then moving on to the next because you're creating these two X's you are working with both signatures at the same time and it just takes a little bit of more brain power <laughs> on remembering which way the needle needs to go in order to create the proper X's so like I said I'm dividing this spine into uh, two rows of holes because it is two inches wide so I just divided it in half evenly and I'm using my awl to create the holes in the spine of the actual journal cover itself and then I'm going to use it as a guide to create the holes in my signatures and so I'm just going to line it up one right at top of the other and I'm going to poke my holes in it I just am creating because there was the fabric there I needed to go through it one more time just to make a clear hole uh, so I'm gonna line it up and I'm just gonna use it as a guide and I'm going to poke my all through the center of each signature so now is when I'm gonna put the pedal to the metal and put my X's into my spine so I am going to thread my needle in the exact same way that I've done all the time I put a little piece of tape around the edge of the thread or the floss or twine or whatever it is that I am using and then I feed it through the needle hole that way and then I just start to sew them in and I alternate between the two like I said because I'm doing like a crisscross design and so it required me to work in both signatures at the same time now this isn't exactly slow and easy to follow in case you were looking for a tutorial on how to actually do this so this is just showing how I kind of did it if you're interested in a slow down step-by-step -step tutorial on how to create this type of a fancy signature sewing design on your spine let me know leave a comment below and I will definitely add that to my list of videos in the future with that being said, you certainly do not need to create this type of a spine. If you're using these templates, you can do a regular straight stitch when you're sewing in your signatures, or you can do a hidden spine. I mean, you could really pretty much treat it as a regular journal. However you like to sew your signatures in, you can do it that way. Uh, it doesn't really matter but like I said I was trying to experiment and I'm actually quite pleased with the way that it turned out it looks pretty neat uh, with the two X's on the side I tie it off the way I normally would with a regular sewn in signature. The only difference is that only one signature needs to be tied because the other one is already completely sewn in because we alternated the stitches between the two signatures. So once I have that done, I take off my paper clips and I give it a good page through just to make sure that everything is where it's supposed to be. But quite honestly, if it wasn't, I was not going to take it out and redo it because 
uh, that was a little bit more involved than just sewing in a normal signature and it would be a little bit more involved to take it out and redo it again but like I said it was totally fine and I was very happy with the way that it turned out and that is where you would stop if you were putting together a journal using these templates however at this point I was feeling very inspired and very happy with the way that this little journal was turning out and so I wanted to keep going and I had a little bit of time on my hands so I decided to create a sort of a master board on the cover and I did a little bit of collaging on the inside cover I decided to try a little bit of slow stitching on the bottom part of the cover so I'm just drawing dots and that's where I'm going to create little X's I thought repeating this whole X theme might uh, create a nice balance with the journal and so I'm glad I started out on that side because I decided that I didn't want to go all the way across the bottom and I just wanted to do a portion of it because I felt like that would balance the cover a little bit more so I just poked a few of those holes through with my awl and now I threaded a needle and I'm just creating these X's by pulling my needle through and alternating kind of like cross stitch it's like a little cross stitch pattern decided to cover up the stitching on the inside cover with some of that coffee dyed masking tape that I have on some wax paper and so I thought it would give a nice little grungy effect and also cover up the back stitching because nobody likes to look at back stitching <laughs> so I also thought oh I'm gonna add some more to the cover while I'm here I might as well right so now I had painted these little leaves with some watercolor on some watercolor paper together with some dark brown thread to create a flower and I knew I wanted to use that on the cover somehow but I wasn't quite sure how but I thought that I needed a little bit of depth on this master board it just needed something and so I just took some brown acrylic paint and I'm just kind of adding it here and there along the edges and in the middle just to create a different texture and to create a little bit more depth and once I finished that 
I add some vintage lace to the cover as well as this flower. I also use my crepidile to create a hole at the top. I reinforce it and I add some sari silk as the tag topper. When I opened up the cover, I noticed that you can see the white of the watercolored flower from the inside and I didn't like the way that looked. So I just took that same brown acrylic paint and I decided to paint it so it wouldn't be so stark white and kind of smacking you in the face. I also glued down the edges of the flower a little bit better because they were kind of sticking out. And then I move on to decorating the inside of this cover and I create kind of a collage. I put a little bit of vintage trim on the bottom portion of the page. You can see I'm paper clipping down that what I just glued because I know that it will get a nice good adhesion between the flower and the cover. But there's that vintage trim that I end up gluing down and I cover that piece of masking tape just a little bit. And then I go through some Tim Holtz ephemera that I have in my stash and I find a palm, like a palm reading uh, piece that I really liked for some reason. I don't know, it was just like calling to me. And so I pulled that out and I ink the edges up and I add it to the top portion. I found that little blue label in my stash and I liked the way that it pulled blue off of those leaves on the facing page of that tag. So I added it down towards the bottom and I didn't really know what I was going to do yet with it. I didn't know if I was going to write on it or put the date, but I decide to add the word stop and I cut up pieces of a word from a magazine that I had cut up earlier and then I use a button to create the O in the word stop. I don't know, honestly, I have no idea why I did this. The palm was clearly like a palm reading image, but it just kept saying stop to me and I think maybe it has to do with my inhibitions when it comes to this type of work. I'm more of a documenter where I'm using pictures and that's been my comfort zone for quite some time. I've kind of gone away from this type of collaging and journaling but I've been inspired ever since we got back from our trip. I don't know what it is but I was completely inspired to restart it and so I thought let's do it now now's the time and so i think i'm trying to tell myself to stop the negative thoughts right when i open it up and just do whatever and don't be afraid to experiment because this is your journal and you're not submitting it to like the art institute or anything and so just stop with all the negative thoughts and just do your thing so that's kind of where i think that all came from that's going to wrap up this week's video. Head on over to GinaMakesIt.com to pick up your free templates to make your own tag journal. As always, thank you so much for watching and supporting my channel and my little Etsy store. I really do appreciate it. I'll see you next time.